So your tape back is always quite high okay. and you also stick your elbow out here okay. which turns your racket backwards. Ah, all right. And you, you've done this in aid of more power where you can get a, like a pronation through on the shot yeah. but that's sacrificed to the control on the shot. Okay, right. okay so we're going to try with you not taking your elbow out and turning the racket over on the, on the forehand. Okay. We're going to point the racket face out to the side. Okay. Mirror the height of the ball. Okay. So if the ball's high, we'll take the racket high. Okay. Drop it so it's almost flat before we come through on the shot. Okay. If the ball's low, and this is the one which you need to do more, is you still take it high, but then we drop the racket low before we come up. So you see with the chopper grip, I would take my racket all the way back here and I would connect right there in line with the body. If I go eastern, I'm taking it there and I'm connecting just in front of the foot. Semi-western, I'm taking it here, so short to take back, but I'm connecting way out in front. So the more extreme your grip is, the more, the shorter the backswing is, the further in front you're going to be hitting. You've, you've been hitting quite late in line with your body okay. and been doing this amazing turn of the racket which gives you that, that it's actually supination yeah. into the shot okay. which is the rotation of the forearm yeah, yeah. to try, you generating a load of power but what that's doing is it's activating the wrist into the shot okay. and if we play with the wrist on the forehand you get loads of power but no control All right. okay so we're going to lock the wrist out okay. into that right angle position. You can see when I point it away I've got that right angle. Yeah. I drop it, I'm still going to maintain that right angle. Even through the shot I've got that right angle at contact. It's only after contact that you're going to let that racket yeah, come through and that wrist is super relaxed. Uh, and what you're doing is you're coming around here and then slap. Yeah. See how that's straightening out here? Okay. So you're going to lock the wrist out into that right angle position and even connect with it in that cocked position. Right. That right angle, all the way through. Okay, we've got to look at the shape of your backswing next. Your backswing at the moment is a U shape. Okay. And the issue with the U shape is if you're a little bit late on the ball, then it's going to calm down and you're going to be connecting with it as it's just getting to the bottom, so we'll lose all our topspin. And that's where you're hitting those super flat ones, yeah. when you're hitting them a little bit late and you, you're not coming up on the ball. So instead of the U shape, we're going to try more of a tick shape. Okay. So drop it down and then straight up in a nice consistent line. You get that nice consistent line from the bottom to the top, then the trajectory of the racket isn't changing and you can, you can have more consistency on how much spin you're going to be getting. You know if you take it from here, straight up there in the line, you're going to get lots of spin. If you're from down here forwards, you're going to get a little bit of spin. Okay. With the U shape, it's variable. So you've got back spin on the way down, you're flat now, and then you've got a little bit of top spin, and now you're finishing, you've got lots of top spin. So depending on where you contact that ball, forwards or backwards, yeah. you're getting different amounts of top spin on the shot. And that's probably contributing to the, uh, the lack of consistency on the shot. Okay. okay, so let's do some tick shape. Which means you're going to reduce the backswing. It's not going to go here and round. It's going to go there, there, and then up. So the way that we're going to get you hitting more in front is with your timing. So as the ball's coming over the net, we take the racket up. As the ball bounces, we can mirror the height of the ball by dropping our racket into that low position on the tick shape. And we're going to time that, and then the ball's going to come up as we come up to meet it. Okay. Sometimes you're... You're still here when the ball's bouncing and then you're dropping and going and then you're a little bit late on the motion. So just mirror the height of the ball, net, bounce, up to meet it. Okay. Not only going down the line is it more risk because you're changing the, the shape on the shot, but you've got further to recover to onto the other side of the court. Shorter court, higher net. That's yeah. right. So you've got to maintain that cross court game with your style of play. Yeah. Go for that high percentage tennis and uh, just keep grinding it out, keeping that ball deep.